Hmm. What's hmm mean? The concrete's smooth, but it has that like. Oh. I don't know what that is. Maybe just dirt. I don't know. I've never seen that. We're pulling forms on the window uh, bases today. You forgot to say good morning. Oh, I'm sorry. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> uh, today we are pulling forms on the window bases and going to kind of reveal those and then possibly form up some more pillars for the center. But uh, it's been exceptionally hot. And we have a couple other projects going right now, so we may end up doing that instead. We'll see. So let's pull the forms and see what we got. Take a peek. Will be our bedroom while we're living in the garage. Yeah, my nightstand is probably gonna go right here. <laughs> All right, the back side. All right, now we're gonna do this side. But yeah, look at that weird. Maybe because it rained. Uh, you wanna grab the drill? It did rain. It is. Go that way. Well, this over here more even. Yeah. Because it was on the far side, it was and easier to a, measure. This has a nice angle on it, so that's good. Yeah. Sweet. Looks good. Hopefully, we'll be able to get that tape out of the. Yeah, the chamfers look real good. Yeah, the chamfers did turn out nice. Aha! Aha! Got it. Nice. Everything else will be covered by <clears throat> trim. Yeah. And even on the sides, got like a weird maybe it was uh some of the like, color went to the surface or something i don't know that's kind of a cool look though i know i don't mind it maybe we could do that on purpose next time <laughs> i know i hate it when things happen really nicely by accident and then you don't know how to you don't know how to re them. you don't know how you did it all right do the next one to the next one at that. It's interesting, this wall is darker than the others, even after drying. And I'm not sure why. I like it. I don't know why. Oh, we need the regular screwdriver to pull these off. That's all right, though. Looks good, though. We have a completed two walls. Yeah, we do. They are complete. Well, the rammed earth is complete. Now we just need to mill lumber and make beams and all that stuff. <gasps> all right. That. This is the whole north wall of the garage. So hopefully now this is making more sense. That's the front corner, window, door where Ricky is standing, another window, another window. This will be a wall. 
that separates the garage from the shop. Then that is our shower window. Our bathroom will be right here while we're living out there and for the shop in the future. So this rebar all along here will divide the shop and the garage. And then the house will all be over there where the hole is for the basement. I'm so excited. It's going to be so good. You're not on the joint? Huh. It's breeze. Right? Oh. That breeze, though. You know, every once in a while the clouds come by. Yeah, it's a good day. I mean, mm. all days are a good day. So what do you think? Forms? Um, pillars? Do you want to form today, or should we work on clearing brush? I'm okay with either. Why don't we form until we get too hot and tired? Well, the problem is we, we might hit a get... spot because we have to we have to measure out our chalk lines. I also need to look at the the plans to oh, see exactly yeah. where those pillars go because I'm basically I have it narrowed down to it's probably in a three foot square somewhere in here. Right about where that is. And about that size. Yeah, let's go look at the plans. Because we could form tomorrow and ram on Monday. You get them laid out and ready to figure it out today and knock it out first thing in the morning. Yeah. Actually, we could probably form and ram them tomorrow. Because there's no foam, there's no steel, it's just rammed earth. And it's actually fairly simple forming. We're basically going to take a wall, a big wall, another big wall, and then a short wall. And then we'll just come in the top and just go boop, real quick, because we only need nine inches. Yeah, it's going to be real fast. Cool. Um, yeah, let's go figure out exactly where they need to be and we can lay them out. Um, I think the other thing we need to do is kind of clean up and sweep. clean up that stuff, sweep, um, move that out the way. Cause I'm going to need to pull chalk line and, uh, uh, long measuring tape. I'm not sure that we have enough chamfers, good chamfers. That's true. I'm going to count how many good chamfers we have right now. Okay. I think it's like five. Table saw is uh, it's, uh, special. It's, it's bold of you to assume that there's anything square on it. That's that's accurate. That's 100% accurate. All right. right. You go look at the plans. I'm going to count chamfers. Yeah. And then uh, we can actually measure out, Luke, if you want to keep cranking on the tractor. Because if we can get the bush hog up and running today. So the answer, four. We have exactly four full length good chamfers. And we need uh, at least two, four. 16 gets us to eight. We need 24. Well, we need 16 good ones. Full length. And for the top foot or two, we can use. Is that something that if we took over to TJ's, if we cut off early because it's too hot, go over and do that? Yeah, probably. Hmm. I need the Revit plans. Because the architects did not design out the garage, I did in Revit. True. So I don't have the CAD plans unless... Yeah, because I, I need to know that because it's going to determine where the front pillars go. And the front pillars are not exactly two feet wide. Because the I measured, I measured it based on the width of the garage doors. 
based on like common companies and stuff like that. And so, cause I think we're doing 10 foot, 10 foot wide garage door, 10 foot by nine feet tall, 10 foot wide garage doors. And that will leave us six feet to make up. So theoretically each pillar could be three feet, but there is a, um, a 10 foot garage door is not actually 10 feet wide. Cause I want the option to use standard doors. standard doors if we don't end up building our own. We'll likely end up building our own, but just in case it'd be nice to build to a standard of some kind. So I don't know. So we can't put them up today. We actually can't put them up today okay. because well, we don't got, have the computer here. We've got other stuff to do. Yeah. Well, well, we've got lots of other stuff to do. We can make the tractor piece. Well, and if, if we get hot and tired, we can go make chambers. It's true. Well, I'm already hot and tired. What does, what does that mean? Okay, I mean, <laughs> I mean at like three. Yeah, with the hottest part of the day the rolls around. The hottest part of the day. Yeah, that's true. I know. We're all the right. air conditioning in the Bobcat is so nice now. Yesterday, I was like, hey, I'm going to go move some stuff. And I like move stuff around. And then I just stopped and sat as the air conditioning blew on me. Uh, it, was, it was wonderful. It's nice when things work correctly, huh? That's why we have Luke. Luke is the kind of person who just makes things work correctly. Oh my goodness, look at this. chip. Lots of chipping it needs to be done. All right, so I will chip. He's going to work on the tractor. I'm going to work on putting the weight on the front, a new bumper on the yeah, tractor. That is my mohawk look. Whoa, cool. Can you help me think through something really quick? So I need to affix that to that, but I don't want to just weld it straight on. Okay. I want to make it so I can pull up, kind of lift one side, set it on, lift the other side and set it on. So I was almost thinking like a... A C-bracket? Like a C-bracket while using this same bumper? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Is this the front or the back? It doesn't matter. That will actually end up being the front because with this blade on here, Oh, that's one. With that blade on there, we can actually hook more weights on the front. It'll take a standard tractor weight now. Cool. I think I need C-channel. If I just welded C-channel on there. Like oh. you did with the adapter yeah. plate on the... Or... Could take some of that angle iron uh -huh. and weld it to... Oh. Weld it to the back side, mm -hmm. like so. Yeah. And weld like uh, a half inch or three quarter pegs pin yeah. and put a bolt and through just it. Drill, not even. I mean, you could, but just drill holes in the top of the bumper there, and so all of its weight just hangs on those pins. Yeah. I see what you're saying. And then have a, because that's going to be the easiest way to install it too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, isn't south. that a cotter pin? No, cotter. Oh, that's, a, that's a cotter pin. No, cotter pins are the ones that you push through and you bend over. Yeah, these are, I think these are lynch pins. I think that's what they're called. I'm like 60% sure, but the way you guys are looking at me. Maybe. Box blade, like makeshift box blade that came with the tractor. We actually cut a good sized chunk of it off right here because it was too wide. And so then we're going to take the rest of it sort of here and we weld it on these two tabs that are going to allow us to set it onto here. So we're going to weld a post here and a post there 
that corresponds to those two holes over there and it will basically set on and act as a counterweight uh, for the front of the tractor. So we don't have that jicky like chained and tie down with buckets and it was it was pretty jicky so now uh now it'll be a proper counterweight on the front end i'll link that fun video when it kept falling off yeah it's gonna be much better now link below putting it all back together just about just about it's uh cleaning it up throw some silicone on it Slap it back together, fill it up, and hope and pray. There we go. You did a thing. Oh, we did a thing. Nice job. Squeeze. Yeah, that's pretty clean right mm. there. That's a new that's a new bottle RTV is what that is. Who needs gaskets when they make ultra black? <laughs> that is quite pretty. So red tractor now runs. We hooked up the bush hog to it so we can clear some, do some more land clearing. The weight we made seems to be holding stable, but time will tell. Uh, yeah, it's hot. I think we're gonna go home. So that's it for today. Thanks for joining our adventure. Thanks for joining our adventure.